what up, what up, what up, people? <coughs> We're going this Saturday, this Black Dollar Saturday. I have got my fantabulous guest on, Mr. Delroy. Do you like that word, fantabulous? Yeah, we can we can roll with it. Roll with it. I'll, add it I'll add it to my resume. <laughs> you bet you're fantabulous. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is good, everyone? So we're going to wait and give everybody just a couple of quick seconds to come on in. But while we do that, we're going to talk about Black Dollar Saturday. And I'm also going to take a moment to introduce Delroy Gill here. Um, so what is up? It is um, BBI's third Saturday of the month. Y'all know we do Black Dollar Saturday. We've been going hard all year long, bringing you um, some amazing speakers and experts to talk to you about how to build your business. And um, the year is closing out. It's been a long year, it's been a tough year in a lot of ways, even for um, you know many of us who have seen um, great success in business. I think you know um, it's been a tough year financially. It's been a tough year emotionally. Um, it's been a tough year socially. There's been a lot of loss in our community. And um, we know that um, I think everyone is just pretty much ready for, <laughs> for 2020 to end. So we want to talk about 2021 yeah. and what is getting ready to come down the pipe, what is getting ready to go down. We hope that it is something that is far better than what we have seen currently um, in 2020. Um, but that being said, um, I want to take a moment to introduce my guest here. Uh, you guys, if you are from Denver, you've seen him before. If you're not from Denver, um, I don't know if you've seen him. Where, where else do you hang out? Where else do you roll? Yeah, no, nah, it's pretty much. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Denver right now. I'm not, I'm not born here, but I'm, I've, been, I've been around now for quite some time. Okay. All right. So if you're not from Denver, let me just tell you, you're in for a treat. I think if you're from Denver you know how dope this man is right here um but yeah so for those of you who are tuning in from outside of metro denver you're in for a, a, a great treat so delroy gill uh who is the uh co-founder or founder co-founder yeah. right with with Stu. yep founder co-founder of yeah. the think we are owners owners yeah that that's that's a title yep. owners of mm -hmm. Live Distinct. That's He's right. also an agent with Live Sotheby's, uh, which is a international real estate company, luxury real estate. Um, Delroy Gill does not just That's sell. Right. Homes. You need to leave now. I'm on the phone. What happened? No, no, you're good. Oh. Delroy Gill does not just sell homes, he builds relationships. He was born and raised in London, England. He is no stranger to complex transactions and international relocation. He is bringing world-class service and out-of-the-box thinking to every detail of your real estate transaction. With a proven track record of multi-million dollar sales in Denver's top neighborhoods, nobody works harder to sell your home for the highest possible price in the least amount of time or to find the next best property to perfectly suit your lifestyle. But Delroy Gill didn't start at the top of the real estate game. And while his partner, Stuart Cowell, are now on their journey towards 75 million, Delroy has invested years of personal and professional development into creating the man before you today. A dedicated family man, Delroy is happily married with three children and enjoys staying active in his kids' school. When he is not out selling homes or participating in motivational videos and public speaking engagements, Delroy can be found working out, driving fast cars, or cooking a gourmet meal. He is a self-proclaimed jerk chicken king, which I have had an opportunity to taste and will give him his credit where credit is due. Uh, Delroy is also passionate about giving back and sets personal giving goals each year. Uh, this is one of those times. And so we are excited to have Delroy join us to talk about how to set and achieve your goals. 2021 is loading. So what is up, sir? What's going on, oh, man? How's that? That was, a, that was a big intro and, and definitely thanks for having me. I will say even before before we get started, like thanks to Jice because like she's literally probably my, that was like almost the beginning of my real estate career. I met Jice and we worked together on the transactions but became really good friends throughout the years. And she has seen my evolution on, on my end. But what's actually dope is to see Jice's uh, evolution and the things that she's actually been doing in the community. When I, when I met Jice, she had this massive folder 
bigger than I don't know the Bible, and it was like filled with all of these ideas and these game plans that she was going to implement into the community. So today, to see where she is is like dope for me as well. So we've kind of both gone on these journeys independently, but definitely always supported one another. Thank you for that, because I did have that big book of uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, I got plans, y'all. I got plans. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. So that is what's up. So, um, so talk to me a little bit about, you know, just the overall, uh, you know, start you mentioned, um, you know, the start of your real estate career, um, you taking a move from London to here back again, um, you know, just give us a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, just today, everyone that's that's watching and tuning in as well, like I, there was definitely, obviously, the year's been crazy, like Jai said. So what, what we are going to focus on today, though, is how we're going to get 2021 to be your year. So if I'm gassed, it's because I'm thinking about the future and, uh, and I'm not taking away anything that has happened in the year. Right? But today we're focusing on the positive vibes only and and how we're going to win in life like we're all going to go through struggles but with me yeah moved from london um to denver basically back and forth um almost going on 20 years now um from london to denver solidly been here um for about 14 years um and kind of grown with everyone in the community and and seen their shift and their change and i came in and got into real estate when it was basically the middle of the recession. So 2008, um, got into the game and, and wanted to break through in this market, but ended up getting kicked in the teeth a number of times because it, it just wasn't that time where you could just be selling, you know, million dollar houses every single day. People were losing their homes. People couldn't afford their mortgages. People were getting kicked out of their homes. So it was really about just kind of helping people, guide them and teach them. And, and one thing that I learned in going through that was that people got taken advantage of at that time. And it was a lot of people like in the black community, in the Hispanic community. When I was going to their houses, like I was looking at their loans and I was like, man, like you should have never had this loan. Like they gassed you up, gave you this loan and it is the shittiest loan ever. So seeing how people could get taken advantage of going into my real estate career like my one of my things is like i need to educate people i need to tell them like what is actually right and what's wrong in the business like you need to know what you're getting into hey if you want to take that loan and it's you know 15 percent on the mortgage and i'm telling you that normally it's three good luck but i'm at least you're gonna know the information this time whereas a lot of people that i was meeting day to day coming from a different country Coming here, I was like, man, this place, they just, they were savage with it, just giving anyone loans. So that's kind of how I continued my career throughout the years, um, just really focused on educating my clients and being there for them and making sure they know every part of the process. So when you buy a house or sell a house with me, like I'm going to give you all the details so you feel comfortable. And honestly, you can make the decisions by the end of it without me. So... So tell us about this journey where you are now. So you're on a road to 75 million. First of all, what does that mean in like real estate terms? Like 75 million, what? Is it 75 million your income? Is it 75 million between you and Stu? Is this 75 million? What is 75 million? Yes. So and what does that look like in real estate? That's a, that's a good good question. So for for public standpoint, it mean what it means is. $75 million in real estate sales, right? So let's just say I sold 75 homes and they were all a million dollars each. And I did that through the year and I sold all 75 of those homes. I would have achieved my goal to hit 75 million. You can slice that and dice that however you want, right? You could say it'd be $500,000 homes and double it, whatever it may be. So selling the volume of 75 in home sales and then everyone can work out kind of what commissions is and all of that. And then it's a big chunk of change. And it's a, it's a big, it's a big goal. Um, even in the real estate world, like even if you're at the top agents and, and that was one of the reasons at the beginning of the year, why we set this goal and, and it's 75 million. This is between me and Stu is, is my business partner. Um, you will see him online, but that's, that's between us. Right. So, 
50-50, we're 50-50 partners, so that number is between us. But at the beginning of the year, we had done 40 million before that in 2019. So it was like the next step, the benchmarks, the way it goes in real estate is like you hit 40, 75, and 100. And then really from 100, it's like it goes to like 150 when you like get credit again. Like there's, there's these massive milestones when you're in the top spaces um, of real estate. And we was like, we want to be in the top space. So 75 is like that benchmark to get into the, the big boy league. And I'm trying to play in the big boy league. I hear that. I hear that. So, so you need to sell, and this is, how does this reset? Does this like, does this, is it from January to December or is it like a rolling 12? How does that go? Yeah, no, J January 1 um, from 2020 to December 31st of 2020. It's, it's a one year goal and, you know, we set out, we plan it, you know, we come up with all the methods and how we're going to do it. Some work, some didn't work throughout 2020. Um, right now, I think we're at about 72 or 73 million. And because some of the stuff didn't settle where it was supposed to. Okay. So it's a nail biter. We'll, we'll see if we eventually get there. But the, the, the main thing for us is, as I said, like we set a goal to be like basically some of the, the, the top producing people in Denver. And, and, People have reminded me this year, so I'm just gonna say this because other people have told me and, and to give it context, but I don't I don't think there's any other black real estate agent that's ever done these numbers ever before in Denver. Um, so people have been like, man, do you know that? Like, and I'm like, oh no, I didn't even really think about it that way. I'm just thinking about the goal and the task and what we need to do to, to do it, and I'm just doing it. But um, yeah, we, we, we grinded it out. And if we, if we hit it, it's, it's going to be a number, but even if we oh, don't, wait, so you got like know. 11 days. Yeah. But in real estate, man, we could get cash buyer tomorrow. Right. You got 11 days, days to hit like days. two more million. Yeah. 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 We, we're, we're right. That's there. Dope. We're right. We're right. We're right there. So yeah. So how you came up to this goal was this was the next milestone and what it looks like to play in the big leagues. Yep. Um, so what kind of, you know, you said some things landed where they should, where they, where you expected some didn't, yeah. you know, and just like you said, real estate, all of a sudden you can have something turn around, but what was that process? You guys sat down in 2019 yep. and you said, yeah, oh, let's go for it. Yeah. 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 So what we did, we always have like a yearly um, planning meeting where we review our business. So we look at everything we achieved in 2019, what worked, what didn't work and kind of looked at what the top producers are doing and what's working for them and you know where what what what's a key thread for everyone that's a top producer and and are we doing those things um, and and I'll just tell you one one of the big the big um, learning lessons for us is we we should we some of the some of the decisions we made we diverted out of being like consistent with how we know our brand is and, and who we know we are because the all every single other top agent that we looked at were doing certain things and, and I'll go into those things but the business planning session basically consists of us doing a review of our business where did all of that business come from jotting it down like you know 15 deals came from other real estate agents in a different uh state you know, 50 deals came from people we know and that trust us. 10 deals came from social media. We'll break it down kind of like that. And then we'll look at the price points in Denver, if you're watching and you're not from Denver, but a million dollars is pretty much a luxury home in Denver. So we looked at how many luxury deals did we do um, in, in that space. So last, in 2019, we closed, uh, I think, five luxury homes. Um, is what we sold five houses that were above a million dollars. And we said in 2020, like that was the key metric for us. Um, if we could double the amount of million dollar homes that we sell in 2020, now because we've looked at the numbers, we know what it is, then we would be able to hit that mark because when you're selling houses, you can generate other business. In, in real estate, a sales um, lead generator is homes for sale. People are going to drive by, they're going to see the sign and they're going to call you. It's like having a billboard up for your business outside. Like people are going to drive by it, whether it's on your car, wherever they are, they're going to call you and that's how you're going to generate leads. So 
if we get five more houses, so a total of 10 homes that are a million dollars plus, that's going to generate other buyers for us. And that will give us that extra buffer that we need of business because those buyers are obviously luxury buyers. That's why they're calling on those particular homes. So that was our benchmark for what we're going to do. Now, when you've put that plan together of what you're going to do, now you have to know how you're going to do it. So we knew what was working in our business, but we needed to add a layer on because if we just did the same things again, then you're not doing anything new. You're not going to grow. You actually, you have to add to the cake, right? So for us, we were like, what should we do? What's all the top producers doing? And they were doing print advertising. And, and that, that for us was like, huh, interesting. It's not something we've done before. Um, and then we, so we called up the advertisers and the prices were great. Like to do print advertising, we were probably spending like five G's a month on print advertising. And that was just two magazines, two magazines. These are key magazines though, and they're known and in these spaces in like Cherry Creek, if you're from Denver, this is their magazine. And there was another one that's more like the Cherry Hills and like resort towns in like Aspen and those people. So we want those people to know us because that's where the money is and that's the market, that piece, that change that we wanted in our business. But we said to ourselves, we know this ain't our lane. This ain't our space. We're not print advertisers. If everyone knows us in Denver, we're very much like media, social, online. That's where we go hard. Um, but we thought, hey, let's get on the ground, do the print advertising. And what we'll do is we'll leverage that into events. So we were going to do like a ton of events. And we're known for events as well through our business. We, we host some dope parties. Like our parties are pretty sick. Um, so we're like, we're gonna, we're gonna advertise. Jas has been. Jas knows. Uh, we're gonna. So why do you think I go to parties? I don't know why that is, but you know, I do go to parties. And you're right, yours are dope. <laughs> okay, see, stamp of approval. But um, the the uh, the events we were gonna do is like we're gonna advertise it in the magazine, and then we're gonna turn them into physical interactions because we're gonna promote the event on social and in the magazine. So the people that are at home that are not on social. They're going to know about it and then they're going to, we're going to meet them in person and that, that's when we'll be able to build that relationship with people. So number number one key thing there is like you got to know who the audience is, right? So these people are at home, they're not really on social. So we knew we had to hit them with the magazine. Um, and then the event that we were going to do had to be something unique that got them interested. So for us, we were actually going to do a dog fashion show in Cherry Creek. We um, we're, gonna block off the street. we're literally gonna block off the street in Cherry Creek and we were gonna turn it into a runway and people were gonna dress up, come with their dogs, walk down the runway. It was gonna be his big show. We put out the magazine, like the teaser for it, I think in February. And then we started getting calls right away. People wanted to register, be a part of the show. It was like, yeah, this is legit. And then, like a week after that, COVID hit. Then it was no events. All your things are shut down. We're now locked in to an agreement with these magazines for the year. Like we're, we can't get out. All of our planning that we just put together to say we're going to leverage this five grand of marketing budget that we're putting out there to get these people to meet us is literally evaporated. No, no way can we now leverage this to do events because all events were shut down. There was no foreseeable future for the events. So we was like, let's just run with it. We got to keep doing it and just got creative with the ads we were doing, put start putting QR codes, like trying to do everything we could to generate business because we're spending the money anyway in these advertisements. Um, and it literally generated us zero, not one lead came from us spending all of that money on ads. So I want to I want to hold on for one second because y'all know and you know we we want to give you guys like some real takeaways, right? So there's there's a couple key things that you said because this here is you're getting ready to go into a pivot. You have to pivot, right? Yeah. So you pivot yep. Before you before you pivot, let me just go over a couple things. So the first thing that I want some 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 of you at home to take away is uh, industry milestones. He started off by talking about the fact that there were milestones in his industry and they knew what those milestones are. 
that is really key and important because when you're building your business, you have to have some benchmark or idea about where it is that you're going in your business, right? So the fact that you set this goal that you are now like actively going towards and created a strategy was by becoming uh, an expert in your industry, not just to get out here and say, I'm a real estate agent, but to know what it means and what it actually looks like to play with the big boys. Yeah, uh, I think that's really, really key. Like I want to drive that part home. And then you also started off by saying we did a yearly planning meeting. And I know this for I know this factually. Many of our black businesses are not spending time in the planning phase. And a lot of that is because you get out there and you see people and they're executing and you're like, let's just get out there and do it. Right. But you're not you're not haphazardly like things happen right so you've got to be able to move around but what i'm hearing here is you didn't just haphazardly like throw something against the wall you had a mark that you wanted to hit yeah. and you spent time before you launched thinking through what this was going to look like how are we going to do this you reviewed what you've already done and then you have key indicators that you set based on that yeah. so when people start thinking about how does this happen Oh, it's all planning. Yeah. Right, it's, it's all planning. Okay, so you're at the pivot, right? At the pivot. And let me just, you just, about about let me just tell you how in what Jace is saying, how key is our, our planning meeting, six hours, seven people in that meeting. That's how long we plan and review our business. It is literally the entire day of planning that we take to, to do that. Like, that's how serious we take that planning meeting. And then on, on top of that, because here's... Here's why it was at the very beginning when I used to have those planning meetings. Oh, I, I want to make a hundred grand. I just, I just like that's just the number. I just want to make a hundred grand. At the very, very beginning of my career, when I was trying to like hit six figures, I, I was failing because I had this number, but there was no, there was no reason why, why I wanted that number. Meaning, like, I'll give you just a quick example. If you, if you want to earn a hundred grand. That money literally needs to already have a place. Meaning, you go to the planning meeting, you say, I want to have 100 grand. Okay, what are you going to do with that 100 grand? You need, oh, I need 20 grand for a down payment for my house. I want to have a vacation. It's going to cost 10 grand. I want to buy this car. It costs this. I want to do every single dollar has to already have a place. And now you know actually what you're working towards. Because if you just go through that year trying to hit 100 grand, but really your lifestyle only equates to spending 65 grand, you're not getting 100 grand. You're going to get 65. I did that so many times. Yes. And I was you're like, 100 why am I hitting this? No, you're 100% because it, it, what, you're, what you just said was literally the exact same thing for me. Like I had to walk through, like before I could get into six figures, I had to walk through and actually go one, what is my current lifestyle and what do I actually want to add? Mm -hmm. And when I started putting all the numbers together, even my savings, I remember saying, I want to be able to set aside $2,500 a month. And I was like, just to say that, I was like, ooh, like normally, yeah. when I, you know, you talk to people about saving, they're like, I put up $100 a month. I put up yeah. 250 It you, It's rare you come across someone who's like, I put up 500 In yeah. my mind, I was like, no, I want to take $2,500 every month and throw it in a savings account. And that in, was included in, in my mind. how much do I need to make a month? Yep, and until yep. I had that like in my mind and knew what it was attached to, yep. I yeah, wasn't yeah, I'm telling you that that will change your goal. Like that is how you actually achieve goals. If you do not work back, like that's in our team meetings, we call that working backwards. We yes. always work backwards. We go into the team meeting saying to ourselves, okay, here's the plan. Now we got to work backwards. Now what are we going to fill it with? We need to fill it with the vacation. We need to fill it with the family time. We need to fill it with the investment property. We need to fill it with how much you're going to put into stocks, how much you're going to save. Once you've moved that money around and it's got a police, it's like, now I know. Yeah, I, I've made all this money, but I still need to make that because I still need to do that. Otherwise, you're just making up money for nothing. Right. Not, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna attract. I 100 percent agree with that, and that that's the unsexy part that I think we don't talk about enough because also that means you have to know your numbers, right? Mm -hmm. like you have to know how many luxury homes you sold, how many homes in this range you sold, where your referrals were coming from, and all of that is a space of tracking and record keeping and having an ability to go back and say, what did I do? And yeah. that is a, a you know another space that I see we don't spend a lot of time in. 
So I just yeah. want to highlight that because I know you, you, you're you in this, the part of your story of the pivot. Yeah. I want to highlight some of those things so that when people are thinking about what do I need to do in actuality? Well, for starters, you need to know what your metrics are and track yeah. those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that is key, key big key. But um, yeah, pivot. So the pivot, as everyone in life at that moment, it was everyone didn't know what was happening or the world was ending. Are we going into a real estate recession? Like everyone was in, in my industry, there's definitely a heightened sense for what could happen in those types of times. But um, the, the, the pivot for us was we, we have completely lost out on doing those events. We'll make the best of it. But how are we going to fill that bucket, right? Because we still know these numbers and we need a channel to, to, to replace it. And honestly, for us, the, we, we had, again, we had to have a planning meeting. What are we going to do? That was probably going to be about 10 million in business right there. How are we going to change it? And for us, it was, can, number one, it was we're going to continue to work. There, there was a moment in real estate where it was on lockdown. Everything was on lockdown. But we came up with a method. For, that worked for us that was like we're gonna keep doing this there, there was at the very beginning there was a moment where it was like everything was shut down but you were still allowed to kind of move around if you were like not with a bunch of people like no one really knew what the rules were at the very very beginning so we were like until we know bro we don't know what is gonna happen in 30 days from now and 60 days from now this is all new for everything so what we leaned into was our network. So prior in 2019, again, your reputation is everything. We had already built up a good reputation within the industry, with people around us and outside real estate agents in different states through social media, interacting. And we build up like a little community of people. So we're like, bro, that is key. Cause they, we have to, we have to now act like we can't see anyone for the rest of the year. That, that was our mindset. It's like, we have to plan like this is forever. What if this was forever? What are we going to do? Not make any money ever again. How are we going to make money? We're like, we are going to host a webinar every single week for real estate agents and tell them what we think about is COVID. What is happening in real estate? Just staying in flow with people. We ended up having like over 200 people attending that webinar. And we ran that for, I think, like the whole six weeks or eight weeks of when there was this time period at the very, very beginning when no one knew what was going on. Hustled through that, like built up that relationship, built up those people. And then we went on that actual lockdown where it's like, you can't leave your house. The offices were locked down. Everything happened. It was like no leaving. And, and we had already built up momentum through the year from our business planning. So we had some deals. We had money saved. It was in my house. I honestly, for me personally, and I know it's different out there for everyone, but the way I hustle and the way I work, like I, I hadn't had that amount of time with my family to like pause for a moment for that long of a time, if it was a one, it was for me, it was it was a blessing to stay in my house with my family. I'm a homebody anyway. I like to just chill out of the house. I'm quite comfortable doing that, but I'm a hustler. So I'm out there every single day, mad hours. If Trust me, follow me on IG, you will see I'm out here all the time grinding. But anyway, did that, we're on lockdown. Lockdown on, you know, whatever it is, it, the door is open again. You can show houses. You can be out there. Literally, the day they did that, our inbox is, hey, my friend, you know, you did those webinars for us. Great. My friend's moving from California, from New York. All these people are leaving their states and coming into Denver. We were getting blown up by real estate agents connecting us with their friends that were moving from different states into Denver. And that fulfilled that bucket that we were now missing, we were hustling so many outgoing referrals from those agents into Denver. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. And that was just because one, we were adding value to those agents, right? We were emailing them. We were keeping them up to date. We were telling them where's the next, you know, factual data points they need to worry about. We were motivating and inspiring them from what we were doing and how we were going forward. So they were appreciative of that and was like, yeah, those guys, they helped us. They're our go-to in Denver. So now we're gonna we're gonna send back some value um, to them in town. And and we we came out the gate like hot. I mean, that that summer was that I, I made we we did 
in in the first three months of that lockdown, you got to think we closed probably like five or ten million at the beginning of the year, barely nothing. Then we went on lockdown, and then 2019 we closed 40 million. In three months after lockdown, we closed 40 million. So we did our entire last year in three months after the lockdown. And it was just crazy. And and so much of that is, you know, like you said, like, well, so my key points, right? Um, network. Let's start with network. That your network cannot be underestimated. I think people hear about, you know, your network being your net worth, right? And I think that sometimes it feels really nuanced, like people don't know what that means. I think that that is a lack of people understanding how to utilize their network in a way that can actually be mutually beneficial, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, that comes with the adding value part. So can you talk a little bit about that, like that space of adding um, value yeah. that we don't, you know, how, how do you, how do you see yourself adding value in that space? In that, in that moment in time, you, you yep. saw a gap. Yeah. Yeah. Ma massive gap because it was, it was a place of unknown and actually going back to the original point of my story about like how I got into real estate and people losing their homes and that kind of, it was like doomsday then. And the mindset around everyone was that it was doomsday again, but because I had personally gone through it before and come out on the other side, I'm like, yeah, it, it could be doomsday, but there's still going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. So don't get clouded by what's happening now and share it. I was just sharing my story a lot of the time through those webinars, like before, like don't stress out. Like I know it's easy, it's easy, it's easy to panic and that. And I just, I didn't see at the time, at the very beginning, enough like telltale signs of like, this is gonna be doomsday at first. Obviously then as it started creeping in, there was more, but my mindset at the very beginning like key thing, have a positive mindset. People are always going to be drawn to the positive mindset. And and the adding value bit is like, again, before at the beginning of my career, it was like education. That was what I was willing to give back. So I just did my same thing that I know. But this time it's to my actual peers because we're all in this together. This is other real estate agents. These are new agents. They had never dreamed of like, oh my God, the prices could come down on homes or oh my goodness, like the, I don't know, I can't show houses. Like, yeah, anything can happen in the world. Anything can happen in real estate. Anything can happen at any moment. You got to be able to stay nimble in your business. If you stay nimble and always have the mindset of adding value to people, whether it's your peers or whoever, like the people, will, that, that, that will attract the right environment around you. And people will want to support you as long as you're supporting them as well. Like this is, this is a, it's like a given circle at the end. That's why like everyone is in it together. And then those, you can't, you can't be in that circle feeling like I'm going to give like $10, but someone else better give me $10 as well. Otherwise I'm not giving my $10. If you have that mindset, it's a wrap, it's over. Throw your ten dollars in and be like, "Hey, we'll see what happens." That's it. The bottom line: don't think about anything else besides giving your ten. I'm going to help someone with this ten dollars that I can give. That is it. Give your money up and shut up, and then keep going back to work. And if you do that, you will succeed. I'm with you on that. So I have two kind of questions to pull those together. Um, one thing that you mentioned was okay. So you did forty million in 2019, right? Yeah. You decide you're going to do 75 million. Yeah. How, you know, you set that based off of a benchmark, but that's damn near doubling your, your um, production, right? Yeah. How yeah. do you, how do you determine what is both a challenging goal and a realistic goal? Like, mm. is it realistic to double? Obviously you guys have done it, right? So it's realistic. But like, how did you start off with that in that space of like knowing that this is realistic? Like, it wasn't like we were going to go from 40 to 60, right? Yeah. We're going to go from 40. We're going to double this. Yeah. And how do you, you know, so how did you determine this was, this was going to be a challenge, but this is also something like, hey guys, we can do this. Yeah. I, I literally, from that question, I have goosebumps from you asking me that question. Like, because it, so for the last four years, both we both doubled our business when we weren't business partners and when we have been business partners so separately 
um, and together. And me and my business partner have only been together for two years. Prior to that, we were just individual agents. But like, if you if you ask me when I when I set that goal, like I had a little oof. Like, it was like, when, oh, are we going again? Again, like damn, again. All right, okay. But it's like then I just remember, like you've done it before. You've done it before, but it's it's a twofold thing. I think to the out if I if I take myself out of the equation and I go to somebody and say, like, oh yeah, like why don't you just set a goal for seventy five? I I know for a fact out in the public and in the world of real estate, they would shit their pants. They would be like, you cra- like no way. That number is so crazy that it's like there's only a, there's only a few agents in Denver that do a hundred. Like I probably as only probably not even ten, not even ten agents do a hundred million. And I'm not talking about yeah. There, there's teams out here that have like twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred people teams. Yeah, they're doing a hundred. That that's not what we're talking about. It's me and my business partner or an individual doing these types of numbers. There, there, this is a very, very slim amount of people. So yeah, when I when when I'm doing these numbers, I'm like, yeah, but he did it, and and I'm better than him. I like I I I just not even. This is the thing: is you don't you don't need to be number one to be the best. Like I know I am the best. I believe that I'm the best at what I do. I'm just not number one yet, and I'm going to work to be number one. You just don't know it yet. In my mind, I'm number one already. And that's how I operate in the business and in this space already. I'm going, when there's an opportunity that comes to, like, people ask me all the time, oh, would you like nervous? And like, nope, I wasn't nervous. I'm ready. I'm ready to be number one. I was ready two years ago. I'm ready to, what? Oh, yeah, to climb here. But I also understand that it's going to take time. I'm not a, I'm not scared of being patient either. Like I have been in this business in total for almost 15 years. 15 years. Everyone is gassed now about what's going on, but it's only literally been two years of all of this. Like, oh, they're all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's crushing it. No one was really cheering. Jice was back in it, but prior to that, there's years and years of grind that no one was gassing about this. I post a house and I was like, yeah, man, yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever, man. What, what, what are you yeah, doing? but you know, and, and you just said something that is so key, right? You said like, I'm not afraid of being patient. And I feel like that because, I, I mean, I, I understand that so well, because I think what happens is people see this place of success, right? And they didn't see the years that you were posting a house Nobody says anything. Nobody does anything. But you have to know this in yourself. And so when like that actually kind of segues into the second question was like, how do you build this self-belief? Like you you, you talked about the positive mindset side. Right. And I think that positive mindset, like having that mindset is important. Um, And maybe you were, you know, maybe you feel like you've already always had that. Like, how did you how did you build your mindset and believe in yourself that you are the best even before the rest of the world sees that you're the best you yeah. knew, you know in your mind in yourself yeah. this is who i am yeah i, ch- I challenge myself right so i am always like and and i don't i'm a, a person i don't really i don't really focus on the competition i know i've said some things like i'm looking at the top agent this is like a business review versus like some people like really study and like follow the competition and I think you can get real clouded and jaded by that because in business, everyone's come up is going to be so different. Like some people, they've grinded from the bottom and made it to the top. Some people, their parents were in the industry and they gave them a hookup. Some people, they they were just grown up in this environment or whatever it is. Like you got to just focus on your tools, who you are and what is going to be a benefit and a powerful thing for you and unique you gotta be yourself like you gotta be yours oh I, I cannot tell you how much you need to be yourself in this business and it, and it, listen this is not about real estate right now this is in business and in life any yes. 
I'm I, glad that you said that. This is in any industry, wherever you are, because this yep. is so much about you as the developing yourself yes. as yep. an expert in your industry, as an expert in, you know, building your brand and so on and so forth. So thank yep. you for throwing that yeah. out there. But, but no, yeah, just just know what know what you're the best at. Know what you can do the best and do that and focus on that because that will be unique to you. But I'm always like randomly throughout the year, I'll just set myself small sprint challenges. And I've done this in my, my entire life, right? And then when you're saying, how do you build up this momentum and this and this like kind of self-belief? I, I Right now today, I started, because I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do for New Year's, what I'm, I'm gonna set my goals and everything. And we've done our team planning, but I will I will just randomly have a thought like, oh, yeah, I am just gonna do this. And, and right now my, my my uh, challenge to myself is for the next 90 days and if you follow me on ig you will see me doing this because i post about it but every single day i'm going to do something that will that will benefit my mind body and soul right and and it could be it could be reading a book it could be meditating it could be working out it could be anything that is going to help and benefit me elevating who i am as an individual right so those are the things where you know that you're centered and grounded in, in things like that, but it could be whatever. Find out, th this is actually more of the key point. Find out what your weaknesses are and challenge those things. If you are scared to speak in front of people, start, make yourself a challenge to speak in front of some people. If you are scared to jump in the ocean, tell yourself you're gonna jump. See, for me, there's there's rarely anything anyone could say to me at this point to challenge me because I've challenged myself enough times. I'm going to, whatever you tell me, oh, try and do this. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it. Or yeah. it will just be something in myself, in my self-belief that I know I either just don't want to do it or I've already done it myself. Like So people can't really challenge me in that way. So I don't have that fear of judgment or walking into situations. That, that fear is pretty much eliminated in any day-to-day -day business aspect of it. Like I, I've, I've spoken to billionaires and I speak to some dude on the street. Like it don't, it, to me, it doesn't, I can go into all of those lanes because I'm comfortable in myself and I can operate and I can speak those languages. Once you push yourself to do that, you can you can maneuver in any way, shape or form. So you got to be able to like push yourself and challenge yourself. It, it, Others can do it for you, but it ain't the same. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. So um, let me just take a quick moment for those of you who are joining in. We are doing Black Dollar Saturday. We're here every third Saturday of the month. Hopefully one day soon after coronavirus world, we can meet again down at the Brother Jeff's Cultural Center for Black Dollar Saturday. In the meantime, in between time, we are still here virtually. You are watching myself, Jais Johnson, here with my fantabulous guest. I'm, I'm going to keep that one for you. Delroy Gill. I just, and, remember, um, I just remember that I don't have a resume. I haven't had one for a long time. So, I'm so gonna, we're going to add that to your resume. <laughs> fantabulous. Uh, please go ahead and share this out. Hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, give us some engagement, drop in and tell us where you are um, chiming in from and make sure that you share this out on your network. If you are on YouTube, we encourage you to go over to YouTube and, and subscribe and share. And thank you for that. And I wanted to ask you a question uh, and something that you said, there's two things you said, you're talking about challenging yourself. And I think that there is an awareness that you have around how challenges help you grow, right? That is literally one of my affirmations for my children. It is, I welcome challenges. They help me to grow. And uh, in that space, I think, you know, I have seen my experience says that we are oftentimes afraid to challenge ourselves when, uh, you know, we don't publicly hold ourselves accountable and we don't privately hold ourselves accountable to, you know, challenging ourselves to do something and creating it. And what I love about that, because I, I remember at least the first time that I think I was aware that you did that, I, I feel like it was, was it that you weren't going to listen to music for 90 days? Yeah, 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 to, yeah, I did that. Yeah, no music. Yeah, I remember that. And I was like, but why? And you were like, I don't know. I'm just going to challenge myself to do it. Like, mm -hmm. I love my music, but I'm going to cut that. And we're going to, I'm going to feed Wait, myself. wait, you just said a key point, right? You said, I, I do. I, music, to me, is like, it's motivational. It can get me in the mood. It can get me in the mi right mindset. So imagine, I'm removing something that helps me on a day-to-day. -day. So now I have to seek that from within now to motivate me to, to to now get into the space that that song 
would get me into, I have to do it by myself. So again, now, after that, I'm good. I don't need the music. But if I have it, imagine if I have the music after me not needing it. Oh, I'm gassed. I'm right, gassed. I'm right. Going to meet me on Nipsey and I'm walking into the room. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> That's dope. But so I, I, I remember like that, you know, and, and that actually got me thinking. Uh, and so I don't do them that often. But every now and again, I'll be like, well, I think I'm gonna challenge myself to do this. Right. But I got that from you. Like and it was a space that I didn't even know was something that was missing was like the, the ability to push myself and stretch my limits. Right. Um, and not necessarily because something externally was stretching, but because I was intent on stretching myself and growing myself. So I will throw that out there that I got that from you. And thank you. Nice. Um, but you also mentioned, you know, that you were comfortable in yourself and, you know, who you are. Right. And I think there is a space. And this was something that the pandemic kind of, I think, brought people to was, who are you? Like, mm. how do you begin to make that determination? Who are you? And people were, you know, getting into this space of like, they couldn't be by themselves. You know, it was like, if we're not interacting, if we're not constantly on the gas and constantly going, it was all of a sudden, like, I don't know what's happening right now. And so, you know, for me, my journey has been, I have spent a lot of time being very quiet with myself to determine what I like, what, you know, what I don't like, why, you know, where, how, all these things about myself, right? You know, is there anything that you have that like, how did you come to know yourself and be so comfortable in that space? Uh, because I think as adults, you know, I think we see kids not, you know, growing in themselves, but I see adults still trying to figure out who they are. Yeah, man, that's, that's, so that is a, that's a deep one. You could have a whole conversation just, just about that. I think for me, um, I, I, I been in a lot of situations where there was no, there was no plan B that like, I've been, but I was forced into them, right? Like I, I, I've moved houses probably 20 times, not by choice. my parents moving all around, been in situations in like crazy life situations that I didn't put myself in. I'm here now and I've got to react and I've, I've got to be able to handle this at the drop of a dime. I've moved country to a whole new place and I'm like, I've got to figure this out now. Like I've just been dropped in so many situations um, that I was just had to be like, I got to think about like, like street smart to me has got me through. Like, honestly, that, that me knowing how to maneuver in a lot of situations for me, that's, that's what it was. But every, everyone's got to figure that that's like an internal thing. Everyone has to look internally on how they're going to do that and where they're not comfortable. But again, I think going through those for me built up my strength to know like, Oh, I can handle like it's not, like, cause when you go through those things and you and you put yourselves in those situations, you will come out of them thinking that's not that serious. Like mm -hmm. after you get through it, it's not that serious to yeah. you anymore. So you you certain things will, will will be it's like riding a bike. Like you, you you the first few times you get on a bike, you're like, oh man, I'm scared of that. And if you never get back on, you're just always gonna be fearful of it. And by the time you're 20 or 30, you're like, no, I don't ride bikes. I'm not I'm not riding bike. I don't ride bikes. But if you push through and ride a bike, like now, just like everyone says, cliche, but it's like riding, you just get on anytime. You can be 50, 60, you get back on the bike, you can ride it. It's not, a, it doesn't scare you. So you got to be able to eliminate your fears and build up that strength from within. And you got to figure out what those weaknesses are for you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So tell us, what are you looking forward to in 2021? Oh man, 2021 is about to be legit. Like I truly in my heart, I think it's gonna be a dope year. Um, like I wanted more people need to start getting in the mindset that 2021 is gonna be dope, or otherwise you are gonna get left behind because 2021, number one, I think it's gonna open up. And number two, like because of the way everything in the world has that gone through in 2020 and like the pauses and ups and the downs, like just like in my business when after lockdown, it went crazy again. It's like, if you're not expecting 2021 to be like dope, by the time it's dope, 
you're going to be playing catch up. You're going to have missed the dope train and you're going to be on the one behind and the party's going to be done by the time we get to the next train stop. Like, you need to be ready. Don't miss the dope train. You better jump on now. Don't the dope train. It's going to be the, the first events, the parties, the, the, the socializing, all of that. It's going to happen. For me, I think it's going to happen in 2021. So the, the key thing to me and why I even started that challenge early, as I said, I'm going to have some, like, I'll have some generic New Year's resolutions like everyone else. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that in my life. But for me, again, it's like when you're an entrepreneur, like you you have to be ready to go. And as I said, like right now, whatever it is. So like whatever you're going to start doing in 2021, just start doing it now. Just start doing it now because everything is on a delay right now. And you have to be ahead of the game right now to stay in flow because things just turn on all of a sudden. Like whatever you are, be like learn about your industry more. Be ready to go. Get 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 super prepared because it's like I'll put it like this: twenty twenty one is going to be if you, we'll put it in like track and field like racing terms. Like you, there's going to be a moment when the guys just can say, "All right, on your marks, get set," and then the, and and everyone starts running, but. If right now you're in the gym, you're you're practicing your takeoff, how you're going to come off the blocks, how you're going to, you know, run and sprint and you're just like working on yourself. And this is not to say this ain't about fitness. This is about your mindset and what you're doing in life. Like you got to be ready for when that guy says hit the blocks. None of us know when that is. We don't know when the guy is going to tell us to step up to the line in 2021. So you have to start getting prepared now because it's going to happen at any moment and you need to be prepared. Otherwise, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is about to be a wrap. Because I've seen, I saw it. I saw it in 2021. I mean, in 2020. In 2020, I saw when we went on lockdown, 90% of real estate agents were like, I'm chilling, man. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not working. Like, we can't work. That's what they were telling themselves. Oh, we can't work. We can't do it. We can't do this. We can't do that. Oh no, no you you shouldn't show houses. Uh, there's no clients. There's no trend. They were just telling themselves this story because they were just creating this narrative in their head of like, actually what you're doing is you're trying to be lazy. You're trying to be in chill mode because you've been hustling and you're like, oh, I'm gonna like just chill now because everyone else is chilling. Yeah, cool. You know what happened? When it was time to get back into the race, Bro, we was in the red. We were going. We were ready, and, and it was no stopping us. And the thing is, in business, in business, you actually don't know when you're losing clients until it's too late. Because when I've just taken a deal off the table and I've now done that transaction, and maybe that was someone else's client, you just don't get a phone call, and you just don't know that they've sold their house. You just don't know about it, and you're waiting for them to call you. And the call just never comes. And then you're at the end of the year and you thought you was making 100, but you only made 50 because the other 50 went with other people. Other people done took that food off your plate. So if you're not ready, your food is going to get taken. And by the time you know, you won't even realize that it got eaten up and you can't get it back. Can't get it back. My belly is full. Man, you dropped like so I, I I hope that you guys are tuning in and really listening. You know, it has been our goal to make sure that there are tangible takeaways out of everything that we do with the Black Business Initiative. And when I tell you that there are some really strong tangible takeaways that you can apply to your business, this has just been awesome. I hope that you have been tuning in, taking some notes. Like I don't know if y'all have seen, I have my little pin here uh, <laughs> because I've been taking notes, um, which is something, and this is, you know, I'm just going to say this about net, my network and my tribe. Like, I think I have just the dopest network and tribe ever, um, Because, and, but it's intentional, right? Like, you know, I had an opportunity, I met, I think Greg Delaney introduced this, shout out to reality, but, you know, you get introduced to someone and it's your responsibility to determine how to proceed forward with who you stay in contact with, who you build relationship with and things of that sort. When I tell you that not only have I had an opportunity, had multiple opportunities to just be in community with this man, his wife, his children, 
and his business partner, his business partner's wife, right? Like to build in a space where we can sit back, have a drink, play some cards, have some jerk chicken <laughs> and just be cool is one thing. And then to know that we can get in a, into a conversation and I gotta have my pen ready because he's so dope that he's always dropping jewels. And what I love is that I feel like, you know, it's a space that it can go both ways, right? And I think, you know, for those of you who are thinking about how you move forward, think about who you're networking with, think about who you're building a relationship with. And if you are never in a room with people who you need to have a pen at the ready for, you're not in the right room. You need to think about how to get into another room. Because to his point, you know, you said you've been in the room with millionaires and billionaires, right? And I'm sure as you are having conversation, even around business, like your brain is Oh my Snapping, God. right? Like I tell them sometimes, bro. I gotta take notes. I get, you, you're saying too many gems right now. I didn't come. I didn't know we were having this come up. But I said, get me a right pen and paper. I need to take some of those facts yeah. that I have in real life. So uh, that's just you know that's just a, a tip for me is if you find that you never need a pen, you're just not in the right rooms. You're not meeting with the right people. You're not you know you're not in the space with the right folks, and you need to adjust that in in 2021. Whether that's a Zoom room or a, a real life room. Yeah, so, and, and, uh, and, the, and the thing is, going into 2021 as well, it's like th those things are key. What you said that that's what you that's what you need to add, right? There's always stuff that you need to add. But sometimes the key thing what people miss as well is what you need to remove. There's so many things. When you're doing that review of your business or you're doing your review of how your life is going to be in 2021, make sure you're looking at the things you need to remove from that picture. Like I, example of this for me, in 2020, this year, yeah, I lost out probably on about 10 million um, in real estate sales in a, in a, in a one client transaction. And and it was because and this is this is the the second time this has happened to me, and it was the client called me hyped, he's ready to go, and then it was one it was one of those moments where I, I'm not fearful because I've, I've been through this, but I think wow this is a big this is a big deal I might need some additional support in that in that scenario, and I go outside of our squad to look for that support, right? So now I've brought in this other agent who's supposed to be the specialist in this area, wherever, this this deal was in Arvada, right? I don't sell too much up north. So I'm like, they want me, it's a big, big sellout, tons of homes, and they want me to be involved in it. I bring in the other agent, we're both pitching, blah, 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 we're doing our thing. And now obviously I can't give our full scope because it's two people. We both are combining. This is what I do. This is what I do. I'm going to not do this part because they're going to do it. And twice it's happened to me. The client's like, nah, Dora, I wanted like you to do this. I didn't want like that other agent, what they're saying, whack, don't want it. So for me, moving forward and never again, and you lot, everyone who's watching you, if you follow me, you will never, never see me co-list with an agent that is not a part of live distinct our team in what we do because we have tried twice and it has failed twice so we are learning from our mistakes and now we've removed that business model from our business plan going into 2021 we learned that print ad if it's just print ad by itself without the interaction we know removed from our business it doesn't work for us not to say it doesn't work it's for us, it doesn't work. In your business, that might bring benefit, but for us, it doesn't. So we removed a lot of things in our business plan of meetings too. Absolutely. So, and thank you for that, um, because that, that is important. What Not not only what you add, what you remove. Um, so I have one more question. Okay. And if there are any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. we will ask there were any other questions. I did see one about your team. You just mentioned your team. So before I ask my last question, do you want to answer? Um, yeah, they said, how big is my team? Literally, team? Currently, my, my real estate team is me, my business partner. We have an executive assistant. We have a full-time marketing person, and then we have a full-time media production person. So two agents, three support. 
There you go. So I have one more question. And like I said, if there are any other questions, feel free to <laughs> drop them um, in the chat and we'll um, throw them up here and get them um, answered. But my, my last question is how can people close out 2020? We have just a few days left here. How can people close out 2020, whether it was an amazing year or a tough year or, year or somewhere in between and begin to prepare themselves for 2021? Yeah, I think I think we've touched on a lot of it, but the, the main driving point is to close out 2020 is to plan very, very strict planning on what you're going to do in 2021. Make sure you do that business planning. Make sure you have an idea and a, and a set out thought where all that money's going that you're going to make in 2021 and really look at your circle and what things you think are working and are not working, remove, add. And really, the, the, the thing is, I think 2021, honestly, for everyone, and, I, and, and I'm saying that this should be for everyone, but this is from my personal experience. I feel like in 2020 and in 2019, there was like a lot of um, like shift, especially in like the black community, right? There was a lot of things that happened. There was different things that changed. And not that in no way, shape or form did I ever stop having faith in God. But it, there was like tough parts of me about like religion and different things. And there was a there was a there was a missing layer of like being connected and your faith because there was like I'm not going to church. I'm not going here. Like I, there's certain things I was like, it was just all got cloudy for a minute, even though I was like, I'm going to be, you know, have my faith, have my beliefs and prayer. But like my, your mind, body and soul thing for me, like going into 2021, I think is key. And, and I say that in terms of like with the virus too, right? Protecting your mind, your body and your soul, eating right, being healthy, taking care of within um, like that is your immune system, your your whole way of being is also going to fight against whatever happens in, in the virus world, but also being sane in 2021, knowing that you feel good about yourself. You, you've, you've put in time, effort and energy into yourself. And whether you go on some training courses, if you've taken your time out to do this type of study and like to me, this is mind, right? Even me talking about I, I rethink about some of the things that I'm doing but you're taking the time out to listen. You're subscribing to Jazz's channel because you're like, I want to hear more of this. And you're filling your mind with the positive uh, information that's going to take you to the next level. Some people are going to, you know, the clubs are going to open and people are going to go back to just getting wasted every weekend and think that that's going to help them grow their business or whatever it may be. But make sure you're finding some balance on your mind, your body and your soul. Thank you for that. So um, this is the end of Black Dollar Saturday for 2020. This is the closeout. And um, I'm getting ready to give Delroy the last word. <clears throat> I don't see any other questions that, that I've seen that have popped up. Um, but I'm getting ready to give Delroy the last word. I want to make sure that I throw out there that um, his link, uh, which I have dropped in the chat, but also his link is... Um, in the description box, you definitely want to follow him and, you know, not only follow his, his journey. Um, what is 20, what, what, what are you hitting in 2021? It sounds like you're about to hit 75 in 2020. Yeah. yeah so we'll be, 2021, 20, 2021 we're going, and, and, and wait, let me just, let me just say 2021, you guys are going to hear it here, but definitely, yo, putting out, cause a lot of people, maybe they're in state or out of state. If you're in state, you've probably seen if you're following me, but like, Putting out that goal is one, that's another like fear leap, right? Telling people you're actually going to do that. We had a whole campaign that we were going to do about that goal, which we did. That will put some pressure on us as well. We will not be promoting our goals moving forward out to the public. <laughs> um, but thank you for everyone who supported us through that. We are, well, our goal is 100 million um, in business for 2021. Um, and that will definitely put us where we'll be, you know, some of basically the top agents in town doing that. Um, but yeah, that, that's the goal. Um, takeaways for people is, is share, man. Like you guys should be open to sharing with one another, like your information, what we've just done here. Like I am, I don't care if you're a real estate agent, 
Like I share everything I know, everything I, I learned throughout the years, any type of business, because what you'll understand when you get to like a certain point in business is it all operates the same. The way business operates, the marketing, the sales, the generating leads, the closing of the deals, the process, the feeling, the events, it all operates the same. So just know what your lane is, share what you know, people will share what they know, and let's help each other get to the next level. Um, and and one, of, one of the big things for me in 2021 is I want to share more. We're launching um, a mentorship program called the Agent Daily Dose. If anyone goes to agentdailydose.com, right now it's $8. It's $8 for the month if you sign up and become a, uh, a mentor of Agent Daily Dose. The price will increase after January because we're going to launch about probably $1,000 to $2,000 worth of training and courses on there. Um, so if you if you sign up now, you get it for eight dollars. Everything will be free in there for you. And then after that, we're going to hike up the price. But that that for me, for everyone here, share, connect, and share, connect, and share, connect, and share. You will you will reap the benefits of doing so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We did drop this inside of the chat as well, so you can go and get your agentdailydose.com. You can follow Delroy um, at, on Instagram at Delroy Gill. So those are also in the chat. Make sure that you follow this man. Um, for 2021, let me just tell you what we have going on for BBI. We will continue to put out free content. Someone asked, is this being recorded? Please head over to YouTube, subscribe and share. Yes, this is available. Um, we are not taking our content down. So um, you will be able to come back and take a look. We have produced 12 Black Dollar Saturdays this year. That means that there are 12 videos of free information for you to help build and grow your business we are going to continue going uh continue our black dollar saturdays through 2021 we also are launching uh relaunching a membership for the black business initiative we have our uh ceo round table this is for people who are thinking about how to become a ceo our ceos our top leadership and things of that sort because something that delroy hit on which is so key is building your mindset and so that's what we have coming out as well in 2021 Stay tuned for our next Black Dollar Saturday, which will be happening in January. It is going to be January the 16th. We have some amazing speakers coming up in 2021. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is the last major thing you're, that we have uh, for the Black Business Initiative for 2020. So Delroy, you have closed this out. Hey. We appreciate how fabulous um, and how many jewels that you have dropped. And so I just want to tell everyone who tuned in on your Saturday, a big shout out and a big thank you to you for being invested in building and growing your business, being invested um, in the Black Business Initiative. It has been um, an amazing year considering everything that has gone on in the Black community. And I've seen the Black community rally together um, in so many ways. And I'm so proud of us for being the resilient people that we are. Um, and so I just wanted to take a moment um, as we close out to say thank you to all of you who have rocked with us um, all year long. And I look forward. Man, to when are we going to be the next seminar in person? Lit. Lit. It's it's gonna gonna be lit. You were right. So stay tuned because we are going to be dropping 2021. Uh, the Black Boss Summit is coming back. It is coming back better and stronger than ever in 2021. Those uh, That information is going to drop at the top of the year. So we're super excited about everything that is coming. And um, again, I just want to say thank you to everyone. And um, that's it. It's a wrap. So peace out. Thanks for having me. Peace.